the day before Christmas Eve and the house is pretty tidy so I thought now was the perfect opportunity to show you around my renovation home. If you're new to my account it's important to tell you that this is a slow DIY renovation home. We've been doing this up for quite a few years now and still got plenty to do. So although it's nearly Christmas and there are Christmas trees and things around this is more a tour of the renovation cottage and um, what's and all. It felt like a really good time to document how far we've come, what we've done, what we've still got to do and um, what better time than at Christmas. Because it is Christmas time, we've got a few Christmas shenanigans going on which will also appear in this tour. A little different then all the I have a really, really big cushion to put on my sofa. That's amazing, Emmy. Thank you so much. No problem. That looks brilliant. I just need to put something in it now. Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you. We're starting the tour in what's known as the cinema room. This is really a family space where we've got old vintage chairs and an old vintage sofa. It's where Maple the dog lives as well. And we have a projector on the screen and a blank wall. That's why it's called the cinema room. We've recently had this new log burner installed. The last one just wasn't man enough for the job. So that's really keeping us toasty in here. This is a very relaxed room where the girls can have their friends over to watch films or play on the PlayStation. And we've just filled it with old furniture. So they really shouldn't have a care in the world when they're here. It's easy to see that there's not currently a ceiling. We're actually waiting for the plumbers to come back and they are coming back in January next year. So not long to wait now. And as soon as the plumbers have been and done whatever they need to do, that's the time then that we can get the ceiling up, which will make such a difference. If you watched last week's vlog, you'll know that I went to Emmaus looking for bits and pieces and I found some beautiful vintage fabric, this velvet, and my daughter has made me the mattress cushion just as I wanted. There's still a lot to do in this room. We've got bits of cladding missing, the ceiling missing. Need to repaint. All sorts of things. Still need to take up these original Norfolk pamants, put insulation down and then relay the tiles. That should make so much difference because it can be really quite chilly in here because these tiles are laid just on soil. I've still got pumpkins in here because I couldn't quite bring myself to throw them away. Moving on into the kitchen, we did say going into 2023 that we weren't going to do a lot more to the kitchen because it was functioning as it was. But even so, we've got new windows and doors there, still not painted. Although that, I'm going to quickly whiz up, that area has been tidied up, but I'm still hugely embarrassed about it. That cupboard has been moved into that space. So none of it, let's go round what's in here. That cupboard is really handy now, but it won't be staying. In the corner there, I'd love a lovely table with a lamp on it. So that's something hopefully that will get done next year. Obviously the um, doors will be painted. Now that beautiful cupboard is moving into the boot room. This all needs plastering. We're having a wooden ceiling and there's a big skylight there to still go up. This unit was something that we found on Facebook Marketplace this year. Now that's also going into the boot room. So although this is functioning, nothing in this room really is staying. Even the table with its fabulous legs, which I designed the table and mock made, that needs pimping up. It's a bit too small for the space. But anyway, let me show you the table. I need to quickly whiz around because Mark's desperate to come in here and prep the veg for our Christmas dinner, which we have on Christmas Eve. 
So I've been playing around with the Christmas table. I've got to now clear this all down and wash all the bits and pieces up, but I just wanted to have an idea of what it's going to look like. I really wanted the table just to be relaxed and casual. It's just the four of us over Christmas, which is how we like it. We're all so busy for the rest of the year that it's really nice just to spend time together as a family. This year I've gone for black and white and green and I've tried to use all the things which I've collected over the year, whether it's at charity shops or car boot sales. So pretty much everything on the table has a meaning. So let's go down each thing. I planted these last month, I think. If you remember, I planted them in some pudding bowls, which I pick up at car boot sales. So these are really pretty. These are the fabulous Royal Dalton plates that I bought at my local antique market earlier this year. And I've been dying to use these on the Christmas table. Linens from GZ Bad Boy Antiques in France. So these are hand dyed and they're absolutely beautiful. The crackers I made. If you follow me, you'll know that I picked up this windmill. It's a bit random to have a windmill on my Christmas table, but I just love it. And um, I thought it went quite well with the table. So that was a car boot find. So many people like this and have asked me if I'll sell it. And uh, I just don't want to part with it. Candles. These are um, True Grace candles which um, as you can see, they've already been well used, but they really complement the table. Now this, this little vase I bought only last week in a charity shop, but these are herbs from my newly planted herb garden, which I've started to establish this year. And the roses were from my trip to Dalesford um, farm shop and my friend bought me this rose for my 50th. And I couldn't believe when I just went outside and it was flowering. This little jug was also a recent charity shop find. It goes with the rest of my leafware collection. My little salt dish there, which may actually be from last year. This beautiful terrine was actually a present to myself what's in there? Ah, I hadn't taken the lid off. I've completely forgotten about these. I bought these last year. Aren't they pretty? Oh, fantastic. I'll use, find a use for those. So yeah, the tureen was a Christmas present to myself last year. I always buy these as well when I see them, these vintage press glass cake stands, and I do sell them on my vintage website. But I find that they're really useful on the table so when you're when you're serving food and you've got platters the food can actually the platter can actually sit below so that's my table for this year really really relaxed and now i can't wait to fill it with food this rather sad looking christmas tree is a potted one that's been growing outside but i wanted to show you this because in years to come my kitchen tree I want to have covered in glass baubles of um, fruit and veg. And this is just a small collection that I've got so that's an aubergine and a chilli and avocado. So like everything that we do here it will be a slow tree that just comes together over time. Before we move onto another room these are the amaryllis that I planted last month as well. There's some more coming there. There's three in total. So those are going to look fantastic in the new year. Who knows what we'll do in this room next year in 2024. Obviously we'll have it plastered. 
I'm hoping that we'll have our built-in pantry made, but we've got so much to do and I really feel that the focus next year is getting the outside a bit more sorted. And uh, we need to finish off the ensuite and the master bedroom, which is just through there, which eventually will be, the door will be a hidden door. So you'll never know that the bedroom is there. I'm glad to see that you two are really helping with the Christmas prep. Just packing stuff away. <laughs> Where are you packing Rowan? <laughs> yeah, I've got a nice spot over there in what will be our bedroom, I think. Yeah. Pack it away until Christmas Day. Yeah. <laughs> see you, mate. This is what I like to see in my kitchen. So what's your job? Preparing the potatoes? Yeah. Excellent. What are you up to? With me? Yeah. I'm just starting stuffing and I'm doing the red cabbage. So we're doing all the prep today so it's easy peasy tomorrow. Yes. Excellent. Moving on to the very last room, this is just a downstairs tour upstairs I could just not possibly show you. This is the living room, possibly the most finished room in the house to date. But even though there's a ceiling and the wall is clad, it's still full of furniture that shouldn't be in here. But that's just all part of living in a slow renovation. For now, we've kept the Norfolk red bricks around the fireplace, but eventually that will have lime plaster on the inside and then the outside will have a beautiful wooden mantelpiece, which is probably how it was originally before it was all stripped back. Now this wall here is the wall facing the kitchen and eventually, we hope, if we get around to it, that's going to be a window. So just here will be a window looking straight into the kitchen. Just the same as the cinema room next door, we do need to take up these pamants too and relay them. Just the same as next door in the winter, because these are directly laid on soil, it can be really, really cold and uh, quite uncomfortable really. So we need to take those up put some insulation down and relay them. If you follow my vintage hunting antics, you'll know that these curtains are a new addition. These were picked up at a car boot sale this year. If I remember rightly, they were just £10, which is amazing. And they look really nice there. Certainly a good do for now. This cupboard was in the kitchen. But when we bought the sink unit, we had to move it. That, so that's not going to stay there at all. But for now, that's got my vases in and various bits and pieces. The Christmas tree is our Christmas pride and joy filled with a year's worth of collections of glass decorations, Victorian, vintage, some more modern. We really enjoy decorating the tree. So the shoe rack there, with covered in Christmas cards. Again, that shouldn't be there. That needs to find a new home. And the sofa is something that we will keep, but that does need recovering too. So lots of doofanals happening in this room. This desk, I really do love. This is made out of two components. We bought the metal base just this year. And this pigsty gate, we bought years and years and years ago. So we've married them up and they look brilliant together. So hopefully when that cupboard goes, this desk will live in the corner. So that really was a very quick whiz around my little cottage. There's been lots of progress made this year and even more still to be made. I do believe that next year we're majorly focusing on the outside space as well as getting the ensuite and master bedroom finished off. So it's going to be really exciting with lots of things for you to follow along and see our progress. And just before I go, if you watched us decorating our Christmas tree the other week, you'll know that I didn't have a single decoration of my own to put on the tree. That is until Rowan 
bought me this amazing Citroen 2 CV. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed, please do remember to press the subscribe button. And if you are one of my lovely, loyal followers, thank you so much for following us on our renovation journey. It's been a joy to interact with you. And we look forward to many more adventures in 2024. All eyes are on you, Rowan. Decorating my Christmas cake. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with it? Filling it on the cake. You're putting the icing on the cake. Thanks for that uh, interesting <laughs> insight. But how are you decorating it? Using um, these. What are they? Mar I think they're marzipan. Oh, these are the fruits that we bought in Palermo hard. when we're on holiday. <laughs> they came home in the suitcase. And, and they've been stored, so goodness knows what they're like now. But we really wanted these on the Christmas cake. Yeah. Brilliant. Let's hope they're okay. Yes, that's right. I'm going to Your drink habit, Rowan, there are three empty glasses in your work area. Right, how do you do I like the precision that's going into this cake. It's very elegantly knackered. You whack it on. do it. I don't do it. I make, I make it. No, I just don't. <laughs> There's always someone else that will do it for me. Me and Dad. I make it. You can decorate it. That sounds fair. This is really slapped on. Really. And I'll watch. <laughs> that's because I just want to eat it. Well, Dad has his cheese, so now he can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheese. Have you got... Yeah, I've got cheddar. So cheese and... Fruitcake, is that a, a Yorkshire thing? Apparently so. I mean, there has to be someone else out there that eats Christmas cake with cheese. I know there is. I, I know a couple of people. Quite but I also know... There are heathens who just eat it. I, I also know own. that it's majorly up for debate on whether you should do it or not. So. Well, I'm dairy-free okay. anyway, so... Right, what do I do? You start from it. there. You know, make sure it's touching the bottom. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. Brilliant. <laughs> Is it touching the bottom? Slightly. We'll make it. There's leftover, you just patch it on with some jam. <clears throat> I don't think we're going to get many orders doing Christmas cakes like this. Yes, we will. People. <laughs> it's like it is. Yes, it's too tempting. My little ball patch. That's what they did at the hairdressers. <laughs> yeah. Right. This we always put this on then. You can't. <laughs> Yes, we can. Put the and the <laughs> yes, we can. It's like some weird fantasy land where there's two tiny letter box and giant fruit. <laughs> I love the fruit. I need to go back to Palermo just to get some more. Can we? I'd, I'd, like, to go. I'd like to go back actually. I'd go back to Palermo. Yeah. My customers have a day, her sister lives in Sicily. Who's that for eating us as soon as it's finished? Me. So I might have to take a break. No, we can watch it when we're having Home Alone. You're, we can watch the cake while we're watching Home Alone. Maybe we can eat the cake. Okay. What do you think, Maple? What's going on? You're not sure. I don't think you'd like Christmas cake. Yeah. I bet you would. <laughs> <clears throat> Cake's a bit small. Need to Is that a broccoli? Melon? It's a broccoli, actually. <laughs> broccoli, melon, corn, sweet corn, and I'm not really sure what that one is. Peach? That's not a peach. Why has it got green stuff on I'm it? I'm sure what that is. Mango. Is oh. it a mango? Oh, that can smell. <laughs> no, <laughs> Rowan, no. I draw, I draw the line at having that in it's the middle. It's icing on the cake. That's an Adam Garth. <laughs> yes. yes. It needs to have it on. There we go. Job done. Look at that. Jobs are good, then. Nothing like bashing out a Christmas cake. I don't think you'll be getting an award, but thank you and well done.